You know, until the 1970s, the whole network was analog. There was no tea carrier, nothing was digital, and therefore all inter-office trunks were either on some sort of radio frequency carrier, which was analog, or individual cable pair trunks. Now, by the time this tape was recorded in 1979, there was a lot of tea carrier, but there were still a couple of crossbar fives in the local calling area, to which this old step had some nice individual cable pair, or wire trunks as I call them. And let's call one of them. It's the 872 prefix, and uh, let me just demonstrate how that call goes through, digit by digit. First, we're going to pick up the phone and dial an 8. Now that initial 8 was absorbed, so we're still on the first selector. We've gone nowhere. We have, however, stopped the dial tone, and uh, are in a mode where the next digit is going to cut into a trunk no matter what digit it is. This next digit is a 7 and it must cut in and you'll notice that when we start to dial the 7 the dial tone sound will come back. That's because this is the first selector and uh, when you are dialing a digit the dial tone is on. There's the second digit 7. Now the dial tone came back while we were pulsing and at the end of that there was a going on, which was the cut-in noise. So we are now on a second selector, still in the uh, step from which we're calling, and on this selector we're going to dial a 2. The 2 is going to actually cut in to the wire trunk, or the individual cable pair trunk, to the crossbar 5. Now before I dial this digit, just notice the background noise that's on the line now. This is the sound of the unbalanced power that is used on the selectors in this office. Once you cut in through a selector, it extends tip and ring forward and whatever is beyond it then takes over the function of having to power my phone line. There, now the outgoing trunk circuit is providing power to my phone line. And this would be pretty close to dead silent because this is balanced power, except for the fact that this is a long wire trunk group and there are squeals from other trunks sort of leaking into this connection. Let me dial the last three digits now. By the way, notice how these digits really resonate on this trunk because there are repeaters and relays to send the pulses down the line as well. Yep, that was going to intercept. So uh, I did a long flash to reset the trunk, and now I'll dial a different last four digits. So the 872 prefix has that same kind of pseudo ESS ring, just like my crossbar 5 office. However, there is another office in the area that has the standard crossbar 5 ring, the one you usually associate with crossbar 5, and we have nice squealy wire trunks to it as well. Let's call that one. <laughs> For a system that has no CPU, the Crossbar 5 is amazingly advanced. One of its features is that it has an automated trouble reporting system. Whenever a suspected trouble is detected, it drops a card. Now, it's been many years since I've seen these cards, but I seem to recall they were about, I would guess, 18 inches long and maybe 4 inches wide. And uh, this thing would punch holes in it, making a lot of noise, by the way and uh, depending upon where the holes were punched, you could read it. 
I know this because we used to find these cards in the trash can behind our local central office. Now what I'm going to do to trigger a card drop is I'm going to dial 851, which will put us into the crossbar 5, then a 1, then a digit consisting of 11 pulses, which should never happen, of course, and then two more 1s. Now if the trouble recorder is working, after the last digit we'll hear sort of a and then it'll go to a reorder. If the trouble recorder isn't working, then it'll go to reorder more quickly. Definitely a trouble report has now been generated. Now does this cause havoc in the central office? No. However, if it were to be done over and over and over, it would have caused problems because then they would think that a piece of equipment must be malfunctioning. They'd try to find out where it was coming from. They'd notice it was coming from the downtown step office. And then, well, is it always on the same trunk? Or perhaps it's always the same incoming register. Or, if it looked like the same number was being dialed each time, that would indicate that one particular customer in the step has a messed up telephone. Now, this little feature got me into trouble once because I was served out of a crossbar 5. And when I didn't want my parents to know that I was dialing the phone at night, sometimes I would actually flash the numbers, which made less noise using the equipment I was using. Well, just a few mutilated digits and uh, the next day repair services calling saying, were you having trouble dialing numbers? They knew who I was because it was happening on my line in the crossbar 5, rather than a trunk from a step. So, while we're at it, let's drop another anonymous card. But in a different office this time, there's a crossbar 5 unit in the downtown building which still has city ring. It's not the one my other line is served out of, but it is the one that serves the Centrex, and now we'll get to hear the sound of a card drop close up. Just to show you how the equipment type affects the sound of the tones, here's that very same reorder coming from the very same tone plant in the step context. So each of those are coming from the same tone source, but the step makes it sound like this, and in the crossbar 5 it sounds like this. While I'm on the subject, I might as well mention that the same reorder tone on a number one crossbar system might sound like this. Now that example was actually from New York City on T-Carrier, but my point was that sometimes you can actually tell the switching equipment type by the way it colors the tones like reorder and busy especially. Anyway, here's that card drop sound we heard earlier, enhanced so you can hear it up close. and at that point the reorder would come on. Sometimes a PBX with direct inward dialing, that is where the last four digits are used as an extension, is homed on a crossbar 5. In order to put the call through, an arrangement called line link pulsing is used. This next call demonstrates that. After we dial the last digit, you'll hear a distinctive crossbar 5 sound as the line link pulsing arrangement is picked up. Then there's a long silence while four digits are being dial pulsed out into the PBX. In this case, it's actually a pager system, but the same thing is used to get through to a PBX that homes on a crossbar 5. Once the last digit has been dialed, there's a which is again a very distinctive crossbar 5 sound, and you hear the ring of the PBX extension, or in this case, the pager system.
One of the local offices, which no doubt used to be a step, is now an ESS, but we still have N3 carrier to it. This combination of new and old, N3 carrier to an ESS office, can be heard on the 365 prefix, and let's just call a uh, vacant number there. On this example, I dial only the last six digits of the phone number, because the initial three is absorbed and unnecessary. <laughs> You have reached a number that has been disconnected or is no longer in service. If you feel you have reached this recording in error, please check the number or try your call again. 919-365 You have reached a number that has been disconnected or is no longer in service. If you feel you have reached this recording in error... Boy, they really like the voice of J. Rain Barbie, don't they? So much so they're willing to use her even when it sounds fluttery. Because if they didn't put Jane on there, the result might be something like this. The number you have just dialed has either been changed or disconnected. For correct information, please consult your directory or call information. Thank you. Anyway, speaking of recordings, here's one you can actually talk through. The 556 exchange in Wake Forest is a Carolina telephone exchange, and its vacant level recording is talkable. <laughs> We're sorry, the number you have reached has been disconnected or is no longer in service. If you feel you have reached this recording in error, please check the number or try your call again. This is Wake Forest, XA-556. Unfortunately, it's only talkable while the recording is playing and the recording plays once and stops. But there's another thing in Wake Forest which is much more talkable. Now normally, all the telephone numbers ending in 99 go to a test line, often a supervision test or sometimes a busy test. When they go to a supervision test, the ring, tip, and sleeve leads of all the telephone numbers ending in 99 are multipled together. That way, they all go to the same test equipment, and when one is busy, they are all busy. But something went wrong here, and the result is a situation that allows you to meet someone. One person dials one number, the other person dials the other number, and they connect together. So here's a demonstration of the thing. We're going to dial 556-3399. We'll get dead silence. Meanwhile, on my second line, I'll be dialing the same phone number. As soon as I dial the number on my second line, the second line will get a busy signal, and this first line will start ringing. The ring will immediately trip. You'll hear a hum. And then on my second line, I'll hang up and dial 556-4299, and I'll talk to you from my second line through this thingy. <laughs>
go. Let me first explain the way it's supposed to be, and then I'll explain the way it is. The way it's supposed to be is that every 100 group, line number 99 in every 100 group, is supposed to be wired to the exact same thing, and the sleeves are all multipled, period. That's what's supposed to happen. Now, not only is the supervision test not there, but the sleeve of the 3000 group is not connected to the sleeve of the rest of it. The ring and tip are connected to the rest of it, but the sleeve isn't. I am on 4299 now. That's what I'm talking to you from. I'm going to hang up and call back on 2299. That was just one of the many meeting places that existed in the old network. And uh, that one being two step-by-step -step lines crossed tip-to-tip -tip and ring-to-ring -ring is especially near and dear to me because it reminds me of the conferences which we had in New York City, which were all in step-by-step -step private branch exchanges. Companies would have these little step-by-step -step PBXs, and the intercept lines very often would sound very much like this one did. And uh, you could talk to more than one person through those, and... Whenever someone would call in, you'd hear it ring in, just as you heard me ringing in from my other line on this one.
One part of this that I haven't explained is the open sleeve phenomenon, and I, I won't go into it here because it takes a few minutes to describe it. But basically, whenever the sleeve lead is left open on a step-by-step -step incoming line, it doesn't ring, and it takes a second call's busy test to trigger the first line to ring in. And that's what was going on there. Well, this concludes the demonstration of the Raleigh downtown step. It is an excellent example of a number one step, but now that I think about it, it does lack some of the sounds that are common for number one step. And so to sort of round out the picture, sometime soon I'll create another presentation called Supplemental Sounds of Step. I'll take stuff from Atlanta, Montreal, Massachusetts, and cover some of the things that this demonstration happened not to have.